bring up here our next slammer. She serves as senior rabbi and spiritual leader of the Reformed Ohef Shalom Temple in Norfolk and is president of the Board of Rabbis and Cantors of Hampton Roads. She has received the Humanitarian Award from the Virginia Center for Inclusive Communities and the Commitment to Interfaith Understandings Award from the Rumi Forum. Please help me welcome to the stage, Rabbi Rob! We don't get applause when we, you know, so that's <laughs> that's very nice. Anyway, um, as a rabbi, I do uh, experience a lot of things that are indeed uh, funny eventually. But I also experience, even <laughs> some of you are the subjects of those experiences. But I also um, experience um, <clears throat> many more things where life. Uh, ends up being funny. Funny as in strange, funny as in unexpected, and even funny as in miraculous. So that's uh, the subject of the story that I'm going to tell you tonight. It's a true story about my father, Gus Hermes, who was born in 1931 in Transylvania. This is not a story about a vampire, so <laughs> not to worry. Um, he had a great childhood. His father owned a lumber mill, so they were very comfortable. And uh, he had an older sister. He adored his mom, who was a homemaker, and she doted on him. Things were good. I mean, pretty much his life was uh, about, you know, soccer. He just, he just was a happy guy. Um, unfortunately, that all changed um, in, at the end of 1943, uh, when he was 12 years old. Um, when Transylvania became a part of Hungary, and Hungary was sympathetic to the Nazis and rolled over and allowed them to come in and round up all the Jews. And that's what happened to my dad and his family. They found themselves um, on a train in a railway car, uh, as unfortunately so many did, um, and ended up at the train platform in Auschwitz going through selection. Fortunately, um, his father, was a big, imposing man, and um, my father followed his direction, his lead, and they were sent um, in one direction, and his mother and sister, sadly, were sent in another. That's the last time my dad ever saw his mom and sister. And he never got over that. I'm actually named for her. Um, her name was Rosalie, and I'm Rosalind, hence the um, funny spelling. Anyway, um, Soon afterwards, my dad and his dad um, and many others found themselves en route to a different concentration camp, a slave labor camp. And in addition to working for the Nazi war effort, um, they had the added responsibility, um, my grandfather did, of burying the dead, and my dad helped him out. Most anything that a person could do um, during that time was punishable by death. But here my dad was, you know, a 13-year-old kid, and um, he did some amazing heroic things. Um, things that we would we could never even imagine doing in our world, thank God. Uh, exchanging the uniforms of a dead uh, prisoner with um, one who was dying, um, and hiding him until he was better so that the, he could save uh, that person's life. Uh, he ran into a childhood friend um, in the camp who was infested with lice and was surely to be put to death. Um, and my dad snuck him into the delousing center in the middle of the night and cleaned him up uh, and saved his life too. Um, but you don't come away from experiences like that unscathed. And um, though my dad survived, uh, he did have some some uh, pretty weird idiosyncrasies his whole life. He uh, would never wait in line for anything. So I joked in the other room, he would certainly not be seeing Fifty Shades of Grey tonight. That's for sure. And um, he recycled everything. I mean, this man washed out plastic bags. Uh, it was pretty unbelievable. 
and um, of course, no laughing matter, but my sister and I could never fight about food. I mean, you could never say, ugh, ick. That was just not acceptable, because of course, any food um, <clears throat> was a blessing. So what was remarkable about my dad's life, I think, was not those strange things, but the fact that he was able to love again. He had um, a wonderful marriage to his wife for close to 30 years, that he was able to have children and see the birth of his grandchildren, um, all of which were, were wonderful things. So about 10 years ago, when he was diagnosed with cancer, he wasn't angry or resentful. And um, he said, really, he, he had no regrets. He felt that the Nazis hadn't gotten him in the 40s, and every uh, day since then had been a gift, and he had lived his life as fully as possible. Um, and so when the time came, he pretty much willed himself a really peaceful uh, end of life, which he certainly had earned and deserved. So it was after the funeral, and I was going through, you know, all those cards that people send and write, and I came across a handwritten note, really it was in pencil, on the back of a piece of paper that clearly came from the funeral parlor. So I thought, gee, this person must have been at the service, um, which was packed, so, you know, I didn't, I didn't really know everybody who was there. And um, this is what the note said. It said, on one side, Gus saved my father's life in the concentration camp. And then I flipped it over and it said, no Gus, no life. It turns out that this man was the son of the childhood friend um, with the lice infestation. And he had been at the funeral with his children. So this is now the next two generations. And I thought to myself, you know, isn't it strange how life worked out? I mean, if not for my dad, this man uh, wouldn't have been alive, nor his progeny and all that um, they were contributing to society and the world. And then I thought, certainly if not for my dad, I wouldn't be here serving this wonderful community of Tidewater and um, being here tonight doing my part for kids. So um, I wanna thank you, Dad, uh, for all those gifts and blessings. Um, for the miracle of your survival and for the courage and heroism that you showed when you were too young to even know what heroism and courage were. And um, I also want to thank all of you for being here tonight, supporting this wonderful cause. So thank you.